Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Schulz. Today we have our final Greek folktale of the week, and this one I'm going to do a little differently. This story originally is one of Aesop's fables, but like many of Aesop's tales, it was later rediscovered and retold by Joseph Jacobs. And so I think it would be really fun to hear the two side by side. I'll give a little break in the middle between Androcles by Aesop and by Joseph Jacobs. This is Androcles by Aesop. A slave named Androcles once escaped from his master and fled to the forest. As he was wandering about there, he came upon a lion lying down, moaning and groaning. At first, he turned to flee, but finding that the lion did not pursue him, he turned back and went up to him. As he came near, the lion put out his paw, which was all swollen and bleeding, and Androcles found that a huge thorn had got into it and was causing all the pain. He pulled out the thorn and bound up the paw of the lion, who was soon able to rise and lick the hand of Androcles like a dog. Then the lion took Androcles to his cave and every day used to bring him meat from which to live. But shortly afterwards both Androcles and the lion were captured, and the slave was sentenced to be thrown to the lion after the latter had been kept without food for several days. The emperor and all his court came to see the spectacle, and Androcles was led out into the middle of the arena. Soon, the lion was let loose from his den and rushed, bounding and roaring towards his victim. But as soon as he came near to Androcles, he recognized his friend and fawned upon him, and licked his hands like a friendly dog. The emperor, surprised at this, summoned Androcles to him who told him the whole story. Whereupon, the slave was pardoned and freed, and the lion let loose to his native forest. Gratitude is the sign of noble souls. And that is Aesop's version of Androcles. And you can tell you know this story. This is a story that, at least in my mind, had been conflated with the lion and the mouse. But let's listen to what happens when Joseph Jacobs gets his hands on it and see just what changes, how much or how little. This is Androcles and the Lion by Joseph Jacobs. It happened in the old days at Rome that a slave named Androcles escaped from his master and fled into the forest. And he wandered there for a long time until he was weary and well-nigh spent with hunger and despair. Just then, he heard a lion near him moaning and groaning and at times roaring terribly. Tired as he was, Androcles rose up and rushed away, as he thought, from the lion, but as he made his way through the bushes, he stumbled over the root of a tree and fell down lamed. And when he tried to get up there, he saw the lion coming towards him, limping on three feet, and holding his forepaw in front of him. Poor Androcles was in despair. He had not strength to rise and run away, and there was the lion coming upon him. But when the great beast came up to him, instead of attacking him, it kept on moaning and groaning and looking at Androcles, who saw that the lion was holding out his right paw, which was covered with blood and was much swollen. Looking more closely at it, Androcles saw a great big thorn pressed into the paw, which was the cause of all the lion's trouble. Plucking up courage, he seized hold of the thorn and drew it out of the lion's paw, who roared with pain when the thorn came out, but soon after found such relief from it that he fawned upon Androcles and showed in every way that he knew to whom he owed the relief. Instead of eating him up, he brought him a young deer that he had slain, and Androcles managed to make a meal from it. 
For some time, the lion continued to bring the game he had killed to Androcles, who became quite fond of the huge beast. But one day, a number of soldiers came marching through the forest and found Androcles, and as he could not explain what he was doing, they took him prisoner and brought him back to the town from which he had fled. Here, his master soon found him and brought him before the authorities, and he was condemned to death because he had fled from his master. Now it used to be the custom to throw murderers and other criminals to the lions in a huge circus, so that while the criminals were punished, the public could enjoy the spectacle of a combat between them and the wild beasts. So Androcles was condemned to be thrown to the lions, and on the appointed day he was led forth into the arena and left there alone, with only a spear to protect him from the lion. The emperor was in the royal box that day, and gave the signal for the lion to come out and attack Androcles. But when it came out of its cage and got near Androcles, what do you think it did? Instead of jumping upon him, it fawned upon him, and stroked him with its paw and made no attempt to do him any harm. It was, of course, the lion which Androcles had met in the forest. The emperor, surprised at seeing such a strange behavior in so cruel a beast, summoned Androcles to him and asked him how it happened that this particular lion had lost all its cruelty of disposition. So Androcles told the emperor all that had happened to him, and how the lion was showing its gratitude for having relieved it of the thorn. Thereupon, the emperor pardoned Androcles and ordered his master to set him free, while the lion was taken back into the forest and let loose to enjoy every liberty once more. And that is Joseph Jacobs' version of Androcles and the Lion. That story comes from Jacobs' Europa's Fairy Book. You can see there's some slight differences to the stories, aside from the fact that it is quite a bit longer and more detailed in a way that one sitting to write a tale would find detail and nuance, whereas one telling it contemporaneously wouldn't have a need for that. There's no need to set things in a historical context when you're living in that historical context. I know they're very similar, but it is important to remember that all of the stories that we hear came from somewhere else. There's a long line of telling and retelling, and each time the story gets changed slightly. That's just the way it is. This is Dan Schulz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, instead of visiting a region, we're hitting a theme, because the Monday after next is Christmas. So we have three new stories, all about Christmas, leading up to our annual retelling of Twas the Night Before Christmas, on Christmas Eve. So if you don't already, subscribe so that you get three new stories and one classic retelling before the year is out. As always, thank you so much for listening.